South Africa, I shall now deliver a statement in my national capacity. At the outset, like my colleagues, I wish to extend our condolences in connection with the tragedy which struck the north of Burkina Faso. These attacks claimed the lives of 29 people. We wish to thank the Under Secretary General of the United Nations, Mr. Jean Pierre Lacroix, for his comprehensive briefing. Peacekeeping is the flagship initiative of the United Nations for the maintenance of international peace and security. This has been the case over the course of decades, for decades now. This has impacted on the lives of millions of people. Peacekeeping operations are the source of great hope insofar as they are intended to address both both pressing issues and to help facilitate long-term settlement of disputes. The current fraught working conditions of missions, the shifting nature and specific features of conflicts, without a doubt, makes it necessary for peacekeeping mechanisms to be adapted. There is also a pressing need to step up the effectiveness of peacekeeping. We value the personal efforts of the United Nations Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, efforts undertaken to that end. We concur with the overarching message of his in Action for Peacekeeping initiative, that of the importance of meaningful partnership and concerted efforts by the international community to ensure that PKOs can operate successfully. This, as we understand, presupposes the need for stringent and scrupulous compliance by all parties with the agreements and obligations undertaken at the intergovernment level. In this connection and in the light of a persistent divergence among states vis-a-vis -vis the notion of declaration of shared commitments, we believe that is an important measure was undertaken by the Special Committee of the General Assembly on Peacekeeping Operations. That's the C-34, that being the decision taken during the last session of the special committee in the, of the, for, uh, the 2020 special commission to, on a trial basis, bring the structure of its report into alignment with the main themes of this document. We trust that this will help to synchronize the processes initiated by the Secretariat on the peacekeeping track with the consensus-based decisions and recommendations issued by United Nations member states. Regardless of the shape uh, uh, that uh, P reform peacekeeping may take, what needs to remain at the heart of the transformation processes needs to be unconditional respect for the sovereignty of host states, adherence to the United Nations Charter and the core principles of peacekeeping, those being the consent of parties, impartiality and non-use of force except for self-defense and defense of mandates. Peacekeepers, under all circumstances, need to remain neutral, otherwise, otherwise risks may arise that they they may be drawn into conflict, and this in turn will spawn additional threats to the safety of blue helmets. The same applies to the proposal to, for peacekeepers to conduct robust and proactive operations. We believe that the fact that such mandates exist, uh, that mandates of such an ilk exist, do not does not create precedent. Uh, such uh, functions for contingents as uh, so-called intelligence and data collection and analysis can be conducted only with the consent of uh, uh, w within agreed upon government frameworks. Data collection it needs to be done strictly in line with the UN Charter with respect for sovereignty of the host state uh, through purely legitimate methods and only for the protection of civilians uh, and safety of peacekeepers. And of course, in this context, the task of reliable uh, storage and secure processing of sensitive information is of particular importance. We believe that it is important to bolster trilateral cooperation between the Security Council, troop contributing countries, and the Secretariat to generate a spirit of partnership, cooperation, and mutual trust. And in this connection, we welcome the participation of the, uh, the largest TCCs in today's meeting. We believe that there's a need to establish trust-based cooperation with host states as well. Host states bear the main responsibility for the protection of civilians to root out the main causes of conflict and to deliver upon post-conflict recovery. Pride of place needs to be given to cooperation between the mission and the secretariat and the host state. 
uh, which cannot be supplanted neither by civil society nor by NGOs. Effective cooperation between the United Nations and regional and sub-regional organizations on the basis of Chapter 8 of the UN Charter, of course, carries un doubted added value in fine-tuning United Nations peacekeeping. This is attested to by the co uh, fruitful cooperation between the United Nations and the African Union. We see good potential for the development of partnerships between the United Nations and the CSTO and SCO. They are stepping up their political standing and contributing to bolstering regional and international security. The importance of uh, the Security Council setting out clear, focused, and realistic mandates is indisputable. At the same time, the main objective of Blue Helmets is to set the stage to establish political dialogue and to attain national reconciliation. In this connection, we deem it to be wise to curtail secondary, peripheral uh, tasks for Blue Helmets, including those of a human rights, humanitarian, and social nature. These detract from implementation of the main functions, and these these require significant financing. This is particularly re relevant in the light of the policy being uh, unfolded, unfolding for peacekeeping to be streamlined economically. The effectiveness of United Nations peacekeeping to a large degree hinges upon respect for uh, appropriate division of labor within the organization with due coordination and mutual complementarity of efforts. The key role in the conduct of shared approaches to peacekeeping as well is setting out relevant instructions of the Red Secretariat is borne by the General Assembly Special Committee on Peacekeeping Operations. The logistical, budgetary, and staffing issues need to be discussed within the fifth committee. The Security Council, in turn, uh, should account for the fruits of these discussions when making informed decisions and during the design of the individual mandates of peacekeeping operations. I now return to my duties as the President of the Security Council, and I wish to give the floor to the distinguished